Hello SGD, Sacred Geometry Decoded. Uh, let's have a look at the Pantheon in Rome, which is one of the most amazing of the ancient structures built for a number of reasons and is again generally overlooked uh, when it comes to ancient engineering, ancient technology. This has to be one of the most important uh, buildings in um, but again, it's overlooked, it's Roman, there's records, and so it's not as sexy. But there's a, another view from the front. Now, even the paving is imported stone. We'll come to that in a moment. Uh, the fountain at the front, although this is one of the smaller ones, uh, this is one of... So if you want to see a obelisk from Heliopolis or, or Egyptian obelisk, the best places to go is Rome. And although the fountain has been replaced, it was a granite fountain, uh, the original, but... What's so special about that is, well firstly we have these single piece columns. These were imported from Egypt, um, Corinthian column capitals and colonnades. But what's really cool about this building is we start to get an idea from the start. Now a lot, uh, oh, I forget which century it was, but for instance the ceiling was coated in copper panels and much of the other building had brass and, and other fittings. These were all stripped and melted down to make cannons and as is the way in the past, uh, bits and pieces got stripped off. But here we have the hole in the ceiling which is called the oculus, like a like an eye, the eye. And so not only is this building a dome, unsupported dome, it also has a hollow center and now this eye, there are interpretations of it. Some say it's a calendar because what we have is these little alcoves around the outside. There are five layers, one, two, three, four, five. See one, two, three, four, five, and twenty-eight uh, going around, which is a nice lunar number. Uh, but that the oculus could have, could have or was used as a calendar because at different times of the year the light's going to shine around and illuminate different parts of the building. But that's a bit disputed. But again, it's this not only a dome but a dome, and it's a building that brings light into it. This is what's very different, very important about this building, uh, which separates it and elevates it above previous architecture is, well, firstly, the dome, unsupported dome, but also it's a building filled with light. Now, all, all the other structures of uh, previous times were dark, dingy places. They did light. You had to have a flame, um, some sort of torch to get on the inside. They were not flooded with light, and that's one of the special things about the Pantheon. There's a floor plan, there's a side view, and again we'll see something really special about the Pantheon. Now, it's as high as it is wide, 43.454 metres or 142 and a half feet. But what's really special is that it's a circle. And even this line cuts the circle right in half. Now. That's just on, a, on another level of engineering because what happens is that the focal point, the person surveying it to get these proportions right, had to be working uh, or calculate a position that floats in mid-air. Not along the ground, such as the alignment of the Great Pyramid to True North. They're using, they're surveying through the air, which is uh, just like the Roman aqueducts were doing as well. But this is one of the amazing feats of this building to create this uh, a sphere and but also have a genius of a design to so what they did was you have heavy stone at the bottom and as they got closer to the top they started uh, using volcanic rock and use a lighter and a lighter stone as they were going to the top until eventually you know in essence something like a keystone although there's the, the hollow is missing but because it's circular or spherical the outside forces which are pushing against the building and want to make the roof collapse are, are opposing each other. So one side pushes in this direction, the other side pushes against it and in the forward and backward position as well. So what we have is a giant unsupported dome. Uh, still unrivaled in the sense of, of uh, a stone building. There are larger domes but even they they, they tend to be a little bit flattened. They don't have this, spher this spherical nature to them. I mean, it's just on a whole other level of um, engineering, even for modern times. Just a 
spectacular building for the so it doesn't have the size or the volume but it, it takes engineering and skill to again a whole other level compared to other buildings now for instance uh, the Great Pyramid which is internally essentially just uh, rubble blocks of lime genius build I don't want to take anything away from it but it is really just st stacked stone there is little very little empty space inside the Great Pyramid now if we look for instance the largest open space inside the Great Pyramid is the Grand Gallery uh, which is just under 30 meters long and two meters wide and about nine meters high now when this is so this was a feat of engineering to create this space as well using that technique but the Grand Gallery 153 and 0.1 feet longer uh, across the ceiling 156 feet long on the floor that would fit inside the the Pantheon building again it's only two meters wide and so it's it has a lot of support to it as where the Pantheon is an unsupported giant dome just spectacular uh, engineering really massive um, leap forward and again with very primitive tools and um, by at least by modern standards and this was an issue so when it comes to you know, what's generally referred to as megalithic architecture there are in prior to the Pantheon there are no buildings that could support a large ceiling so the typical design would be to have columns and then to have a relatively short beam going across the top so what you, you never have an, a large open space they were not able to do this you know so again everyone's oh, you know the stones were giant uh, or this type of thing but the lost civilization could not build a large ceiling and so that they were you know like genius uh, beautiful structures but they were not advanced <laughs> they were not advanced there's no uh, because they couldn't build a ceiling they couldn't you know they couldn't build a large hall or a large space they had to use columns and then relatively short and because of that there was no light on the inside they couldn't light they had to use torches and flames and um, these other to, to light the inside of the building so even when we go forward to Greek structures such as the um, Parthenon now you can see some of the because of the re, uh, restoration work but you see some of the inside part of a wall so the outside was supporting uh, but then we had the inside portion and there you get a view of the inside so even though they they've now taken the older um, Egyptian columns and they've expanded the roof and created a larger open space and now you can say and then they had a giant statue of Athena in there um, originally but just like the Egyptian ones these even though it was only relatively small space it was a very unstable construction the roofs are all you, you don't find of the, such as Karnak, Luxor or the Parthenon where the roof is intact uh, you'd have places like the Temple of Seti and you can see where the, the ceiling is intact but again it's that you could use the term claustrophobic inside because of these large giant columns uh, you can you can't really ever see too far in the distance again it's very dark um, but when it comes to the Pantheon we have giant dome flooded with light and it's again taking architecture to a new level uh, the Romans were building temples like this and they had the same problem you just couldn't build a large span ceiling a large hall space and if, if when you did such as here as the so you can see you get an idea from okay there's a fellow it's more and you can see it's again getting larger but at the space between is it's not particularly large and again unstable they, they don't survive over time they fall and collapse in on themselves but we come to places well firstly the stonework uh, it's genius, beautiful stonework inside the Pantheon now you can start um, being on the inside it's you know, with, without a fisheye lens you can't really get a, a really good idea of how light but 40 43 meters uh, 
unsupported dome. But what's also very important um, and interesting is the paving, the original paving as well. Now the outside paving also is imported, but what is there? So again, now from the ceiling you start to get, you know, these people look like ants inside the dome. This is giant, unsupported, massive dome. But you have the yellow and the red. Now the yellow is Nubian marble. So new, uh, the land south of Egypt. And the red is Egyptian porphyry. Right, Mr. P there, porphyry. But that stone is again imported very far away. Very, very, and it's from Egypt. So the columns themselves um, come down from Egypt, but also from Aswan as well. So we have these giant single piece columns of Egyptian granite, Egyptian porphyry. Again, I've misspelled, I should have, between the R and the H, it should be a P. Porphyry is purple and I'll do a separate video on the porphyry in like places like Rome and Istanbul slash Constantinople and the uh, giant coffer boxes very similar to those in the Serapeum which some of them are they're, they're made out of different granites but porphyry is one of the stones that the Serapeum boxes are made out of so just to get an idea we have the Aswan quarry we have Mons Porphyrites and Mons Claudianus. Now these were ancient quarries but uh, they, the Romans were using this as a quarry site as well. So they're um, the granite and the porphyry. This is where it was imported from and just to get it now it's quite a it's still a, even from to get to the Red Sea but they really had to get it to the Nile to get it down so they also had to transport the stone across land considerable distance. As one, not too difficult, it's right next to the river, you wait for the flood, float it down the river and away you go, but Mons Porphyrides and Mons Claudianus had to be transported across land before they got there. Now, so Mons Porphyrides, Mons Claudianus and Aswan Quarry, that's where they are. Now where were the Romans transporting this stone to? Well, to Rome and to Constantinople, uh, also to Baalbek in Lebanon. Uh, where they were using the porphyry, uh, Egyptian granite to make their um, massive granite columns there as well. But I'll cover these because these two quarries, Mons Porphyrides and Mons Claudianus, are uh, just uh, the archaeological record that's very, very um, interesting. I did a Mons Claudianus video a while ago, but I'll do one that's so include Mons Porphyrides because we, again we have these giant coffer boxes in Rome, Constantinople and other places they rival and in some cases such as the sarcophagus of St Helena are just better than the Serapeum boxes in Egypt undeniably because they got uh, three dimensional sculpture covering the box, it's not just a box, it's a box with rich ornamentation on there. So there's the, but the Pantheon, so that's the, the building itself, genius, uh, you know, ancient high technology on display uh, the materials and uh, so it's not just the paving on the inside it's also the paving on the outside as well the, the, the amount of stone needed to be be required and not just smaller pieces uh, for instance to make the floors but giant single piece columns of Egyptian granite too focal point uh, again taking older architecture you know such as the the Grand Gallery in the Pyramids or Karnak and Luxor and the largest Egyptian temples or even the uh, Greek temples again just taking it to a whole other level and changing the nature of of buildings because now we have a building flooded with light with a focal point that floats in the air it's not aligning it along the ground and then measure it yet you have to get this really taking it to a whole other high level of um, architecture and uh, and technique and again a building with light not a building that needs to have light imported on the inside so plus all of the now removed uh, bronze and copper plating in there as well so that's the Pantheon uh, it should be on the top of like any list of, of ancient architecture but well anyway it's there and it's yeah it's something it's really transforms and it wasn't even till like till the great cathedrals 
took a big step back and then we went forward. Great cathedrals anyway. Have a good one.